rivals. Every Pokemon game has them, and they offer a boss fight every once in a while throughout the story to make each game a bit more interesting. They're the trainers you grow with as a Pokemon trainer. Whether they were your friend before or someone you never met, no matter how they treat you, you grow with them as a trainer. Who's the best and who's the worst? Well, question two is going to be answered a lot quicker than question one, but let's do the rules first. I'll be looking at their roles in game, teams, and theme song. And once again, opinions are a thing. If you disagree, don't be a moron in the comments. Be civil and kindly tell me what you thought and what you think the order should be. Because I realized I couldn't do this on my own, I invited Cousin Brody, a.k.a. The Hypnotic. Hello. It's The Hypnotic. If you remember, I was on Kevin's Emerald Nuzlocke, and I'm excited to be here. So with that out of the way, let's get right into the list. So one of the numerous problems with X and Y... You mean, besides Team Flare, Diantha, and the entire Elite Four, and next to no post-game. Yeah. The Rivals were a severe topic that Pokemon didn't touch upon for Gen 6's first games. You had a total of four Rivals, by far the most in history, and I'm not clumping everyone into one spot. But we're putting three of them at the bottom spot, because let's face it, Shauna, Tierno, and Trevor are completely useless. You meet three of them at the beginning of your journey, and they pop up from time to time. Sean just wants to make memories, Tierno wants to show off moves, and Trevor wants to finish the decks. You know what would have been better? If they were one character! Trevor loves collecting Pokemon, but sucks at battling. Tierno is good at battling, but doesn't give a crap about the decks, and Sean is kind of in the middle. This was the problem. There were too many characters for them to flush out. You battle all three of them before gym number eight, with Shauna having Delcaddy, Gudra, and the starter with the type disadvantage to yours. Tierno has Talonflame, Roserade, and Crawdont, and Trevor has Raichu, Aerodactyl, and Florges. They're not hard at all to fight. Long story short, worst rivals in the games. So you know how those three are the worst rivals. Yeah, Callum saw Serena didn't do much better. Whatever gender you pick will determine your main rival. If you play as a male, then your rival will be Serena. Female, your rival's Callum. Other than changing up the dialogue to match the gender, they say and do everything the same. They also do the least throughout the story. Every other main rival from Blue to Hue were always one step ahead of you, but Serena is always lacking behind, or Callum. You know what, because I actually like Serena in the anime, and I think we can both agree, I'm referring to the rival as Callum. Callum can't put up a good fight at any point to save his life, but the final fight against him in the middle of Victory Road, but like I said, not hard. With either male or female Meowstic, depending on gender, as well as Altaria, Absol, and one of the three Kanto Eevees, and the starter with the type advantage to yours, Jolteon Delphox, Flareon Greninja, or Vaporeon Chestnut. As much as I love Absol, female Meowstic, Vaporeon, and all the starters, all of them can be one-shotted. And the theme is the same for the three other friends. And it's good, but it's not fantastic. Game Freak, next time, actually care about the rivals a bit, yeah? So after Blue and Silver laid the law down in Kanto and Johto on how to be rivals, how the 150% actual f were Brendan and May so bad? Seriously guys, what happened? I'm not the guy that's gonna say rivals need to be what Blue and Silver were, but Game Freak does realize that the rivals were in such high standards after Silver, and then they completely ruined it. May was not a good rival, at all. They were more like someone who gave you useless pointers about all the extra stuff from the game. Yeah, I don't care about that. Just shut up and fight me. Her final battle in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald aren't even worth mentioning, because the last time you battle her is in Lily Cove, before the seventh badge. Boris has you battle her after you beat the Elite Four, but yeah, still weak as hell. Swello, Raichu, either Breloom or Sceptile, Wailord or Swampert, Macargo or Blaziken. I think that might be the weakest rival team of all time. The only Pokemon with a 500 base stat total is the starter. The theme is alright, but it's not the greatest. So all around, disappointment comes to mind when I think of May and Brendan, because of the same f***ing character. Jaren and Bianca. I bet you thought they were going to be at the bottom, right? Well, guess what? These two prove that Game Freak can make a more than one rival play an important part in the story and not be annoying. After a very recent playthrough of Pokemon Black White, Kevin can safely say that Jaren and Bianca aren't the worst rivals ever. They both play their roles well, and I also love their theme song. It's not my favorite, god no, but it's still pretty good. Jaren does what he can to bring back the feeling of Blue, and while he doesn't do it perfectly, he does an honestly pretty good job with it. Although, for his final battle he only has four Pokemon, he does a good job putting up a fight. Lyperd, Unpheasant, and one of the Elemental Monkeys, and the Star with the type advantage to yours. 
Bianca is the innocent side of all of this, and I've actually come to like her a lot more. In fact, I had more problems with her final fight than Charon's. Stoutland, Musharna, and either Simi Poor or Superior, Simi Seer and Samara, or Simi Sage and Embor. Charon picks a starter with a type advantage over yours, Bianca picks a type disadvantage to yours. All in all, I think they made decent rivals. So let me start by saying, in Sun and Moon, I wanted to strangle Hao. If there was anything better in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, it was that Hao wasn't an annoying dumbass as much. To be fair, he still lets Lily get captured and then whines about how he couldn't do anything. You have Pokemon, numbnuts! Use them! I've never been madder at a character in Pokemon than I was at Hao at that freaking moment! Kevin, calm down, man. It's okay. Think about it like this. His theme is fun, and oh my god. You face him in the final battle in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon to determine the first champ of Alola. So, they take a page out of Blue's book, but still, it was awesome nonetheless. Alolan Raichu, Tauros, Noivern, Kabominal, and Eevee with a type disadvantage to his starter, and starter with a type disadvantage to yours? True. All in all, the improvements they added in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon make him a much better rival in the long run. What make him number seven? Other than that, he still pissed me off. Now, Kevin, this guy is my favorite rival. I want you not to bash him too much, alright? Okay. Well, Q for me was the statement of what could have been. He has all the potential in the world, and honestly, I'm a little bit upset you're chasing after his sister's lost Pokemon. I mean, on one hand, it's nice, but you as a player barely know her. If you were trying to save his own Pokemon, then Black 2 might be my favorite Pokemon game. Really? Come on. Just replace all the dialogue about his sister's Pokemon and have it be his. That way, the journey becomes so much more meaningful. True, but another big issue that I have with him is his theme. He's such a serious guy, but personally his theme has always just been all over the place for me. I've never been that much of a fan of it. His team, on the other hand, is not fun to fight. On Fezzet, either Simi Poor's Embor, Simi Seor's Superior, or Simi Sage and Simurat and Bufalon. And yeah, his Bufalon is a huge freaking problem no matter what. It has head charge! Please just stop with this crap! But hey, he gives you Thunderbolt as an award for the ass pounding he gave you with that afro buffalo. All around, Q is kinda stuck in a spot of was a good rival but certain things are holding him back. Wally was probably the biggest disappointment of Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. He catches Ralts, you eat him alive in front of the Mauville Gym, and the final battle at the beginning of Victory Road, and that's it. So when Oris came out, it was the same old story. All was going according to plan until you hit Victory Road. Wally doesn't show up. I mean, well, they couldn't have forgotten about him. You travel all the way through Victory Road, and then there, at the end, is Wally. He thanks you for giving him the start on becoming a trainer, and how he's happy the two of us are friends. But then the guitar kicks in. Are you freaking kidding me? Easily the second best, if not the best, rival theme in the entire franchise. Well, well his team is nothing super special. He uses an Altaria, a Del Caddy. A Roselia and a Magneton. But he's got a Gallade. A Mega Gallade. In Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, he has a Gardevoir. Not an Aurus. In Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, he just shows at the beginning of Victory Road. But here, he made it through one of the most annoying and difficult Victory Roads of all time, just so he could meet you there. It adds so much more to him instead of getting his ass kicked back out of Victory Road. And for that, Wally is number five. Here he is, folks, the be-all and end-all for rivals, what every rival must try to be. And so far, in our eyes at least, only three have been better. But seriously, Blue was an amazing rival. He was such an ass. Even when you beat him, he'd tell you how much better he was before screaming, Smell you later! He was what the rival was in Gen 1, and every time I replay Fire Red and Leaf Green, I can't help but acknowledge how good of a rival Blue is. His theme is just a trainer theme, which kind of sucks, but everything changes once you hit the Elite Four. Just before Victory Road, you battle Blue one last time before he tells you he's going to beat the Elite Four. Once you go through Victory Road, beat the Elite Four. Lance tells you that you would be champion if it weren't for... Blue. While Kevin did say that Blue wasn't the greatest champ, a great rival he was. 
Pidgeot, Rhydon, Alakazam, Executor, or Venusaur, Gyarados, or Blastoise, and Arcanine, or Charizard, there is no denying how good Blue is as a rival. Not many know this, but another fact about Blue that makes him more awesome is if you rematch the Elite Four in Fire Red and Leaf Green, he no longer has Pidgeot or Rhydon. Now he's got Heracross and Tyranitar. Good God. But as we said, only three have surpassed him over the years. Immediately after Game Freak made Blue as good as they made him, they looked at each other and said, We need to make someone better. They want to up Blue with the most badass rival for 15 years. Silver is every bit of asshole Blue was, except he's not a douche. Instead, he is grade A dick in every sense of the word. He steals the Pokemon from Professor Elm's lad and is just a genuine ass throughout the journey, constantly talking about how he hates the weak and anyone who talks about loving Pokemon in any capacity. Did I say grade A dick yet? His theme song is also really good, and his team is freaking terrifying. The final battle with him right at the end of Victory Road is great, but after you beat the Elite Four, he will challenge you before you go in, and most of his team is fully evolved. Also, the one line of dialogue he says is, my well-trained beyond recognition Pokemon are going to pound you. Now his team are Gengar, Alakazam, Magneton, Sneasel, Crobat, and either Meganium, Feraligatr, or Typhlosion. Honestly, there are no problems with them. The top two are just a little better in my opinion. Still, Silver's a badass. Hey Sega! Take note on how to make a better Silver! The Silver King, and now we're fighting, and now we're fighting Silver! Don't forget, he's not beatable. It's no use! It's no f use! So remember when we said Game Freak needed to actually try to make rivals after Gen 6? They listened. Well, how's alright, but... Then there's Gladion! Game Freak 15 years to make a rival as badass as Silver, but it was worth the freaking wait. Gladion is one amazing rival. Immediately looked at as anti hero. He does not do a whole lot until it is revealed that Lily and Nebbia are captured. He decides that it's best to team up with you and Hal to save him and to stop his mom from bringing Ultra Beast into our world. And no, we're not looking at Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon because his character is just. It, it doesn't work since Luz Samine has completely changed her goal. His team is extremely underrated, but I mean, it's understandable considering Sun and Moon has an unbelievably good soundtrack. Either way, he battles you before you make your way to Victory Road, but he'll battle you in champion rematches with Crobat, Weavile, Porygon Z, Lucario, and Silvali with the memory to counter your starter. However, in Ultra Sun Ultra Moon, he replaces Weavile with Zoroark and has one of the Kanto starters in the rematch, and it's the same type as your starter. I'm sorry, but that's freaking amazing! His design is also really cool, and his backstory is freaking dark! All in all, Gladion is one of the best rivals of all time, but not quite the best. Brian! Kill Kevin for saying Barry's the best! Now hold the f*** on! There are plenty of reasons as to why I chose Barry as number one. He's almost a cross between Blue and May, and while that doesn't sound like the greatest thing, just listen. He's your rival, wants to be the champion at all costs, and will beat you down. He's also one step ahead at all times, but to me, he was never an annoying, pretentious f His theme is freaking amazing, and it fits his character better than any other theme song for character in Pokemon. It's so frantic and awesome, exactly like Barry. Also, the guy made me laugh on a lot of occasions, and my god, he built a tough team. Seriously, Heracross, Staraptor, Snorlax, Roserade or Tutera, Floatzor, Empoleon, and Rapidash are Infernape. And trust me, he knows how to use all of them. Staraptor has U-Turn, by the way. He also makes a cameo at Spear Pillar for a little bit of vengeance on Team Galactic. Heals your Pokemon after the battle, and then he gets the hell out of Dodge. He knows this is your fight, not his. The final battle right as you're going in the Pokemon League is awesome, and the fact that you battle him once a day in the fight area is freaking awesome. And while you're probably thinking I'm being biased because Gen 4 was my first generation of Pokemon, let me make something clear. I hated Barry up until my first playthrough of Platinum in over three years that I played last year. 
and that's when I realized Barry is one of the best rivals in Pokemon. Also, after you beat him in the fight area, he has this dialogue. It's alright though, keep getting tougher. The more you do, the tougher my Pokemon and I will get too. There's no end to Pokemon, that's what I'm saying! 